the arrival of our fourth free order of the day. We are at a forward and ready to get started with our conference agenda for this evening's meeting of the Passaic County Board for the free order. Lou, can you do a roll call for us? Free order is out there. Bast, Duffy, James, yes. Lepore. Here. Deputy Director Lazara. Here. Director Barton. Here. Uh, Anthony, administrative report. Uh, we are going to start with our Public hearing for the fiscal year 2019 State County Community Development Block Grant Action Plan. We have here Deborah Hoffman, Vision of Economic Development, who heads up CDBG. Deborah? The public hearing is being held in accordance with the federal regulation 24 CFR Part 91, the State County's plan for citizen participation. The State County has prepared a new annual action plan for fiscal year 2019 for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Thank you, Okay, the State County has prepared the annual action plan for 2019 for the State County Community Development Block Grant Program. These documents are on public display between May 23rd, 2019, and June 21st, 2019, and comments of the public are welcome. The county will receive $860,233 from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Block Grant funds for the fiscal year 2019 program year that runs from September 1, 2019 to August 31st, 2020. Activities in nine communities and two nonprofit agencies have been recommended for funding. And um, the objective of the CDBG program is to assist low and moderate income residents and individuals with special needs, presumed benefit in the county per se in 11 communities participating in the urban county CDBG program. Uh, no more than 50% of the grant may be utilized for public service activities. Very quickly, the projects that are funded, Borough of Bloomingdale, Union Avenue ADA improvements, $75,000, Borough of Calvin, Burnett Avenue repaving project, $100,000, Borough of Orthon, reconstruction of ADA ramps, $55,000, Township of Little Falls, Signac Area Roadway Rehabilitation, Nickel John Avenue, $85,000, Borough of Crossing Park, North Penn Street Roadway with Improvement, $48,187, Borough of Totoa, Sanitary Sewer Lining Project, Boyle Avenue, $90,000, Township of West Milford, Municipal Complex Building 188, Bathroom and Retrofit, uh, $35,000, Borough of Woodland Park, the Woodland Park ADA Compliant Bathrooms, Environment Free Public Library, $60,000, and to save county, in uh, various county parks, ADA retrofit for bathrooms. We uh, anticipate Rifle Camp Park and Gopalpur Park, $110,000. Nonprofits uh, funded, CASA for $15,000, and Home Care Options for the Visitor Shopper Plus Program, $15,000. Uh, and we welcome any comments from the public. Thank you very much, Deborah. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Community Development Block Grant is a federally funded program that provides low and moderate income uh, areas as well as with disabilities with some of the things that we're able to build and do for them uh, with uh, funds from our federal government rather than the uh, county tax dollars. So with that, I know we have uh, the need to do a, comment, a public comment period in, as part of the CDBG here. So can I have a motion to open the public comment? Do I, do I need a motion? Yeah, yes. Okay. Move a motion. Open the public comment period on this hearing. Move by Fielder of the Four. Second. Fielder of the Four. Three alders. Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. The Four. Yes. Deputy Director Lazare. Yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. So this begins the public hearing on the fiscal year 2019 CDBG action plan. This is the general. Uh, open up public portion of the meeting. This is specifically on the materials that were presented. Then wish to be heard. Seeing all my authority, my move to close the public portion. Second. Three orders. Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. The board? Yes. Deputy Director Lazara? Yes. Director. Director Bartlett? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. I have a motion to close the public hearing. I have a motion to close the public hearing. Builders Duffy, yes. James, yes. the board, yes. Deputy Director Lazare, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. What's next, Anthony? All right, we're going to continue to go out of order. Uh, back in 
late February, I guess, uh, this board appointed Michael Glovin as uh, State County Council. Uh, we never did the public swearing in of uh, Michael, so we thought that tonight would be as good as any. Uh, and I think the director, you are uh, going to perform that oath of office. It would be of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, I will bear true faith, and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same, and to the governments established, and to the governments established, in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all of the duties, all of the duties as county council, as county council for the county of Passaic, for the county of Passaic, to the best of my abilities and understanding, to the best of my abilities and understanding. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. This is a resolution authorizing an award of contract to United Federation Systems for the monitoring of county security systems and alarm services for Passaic County. Um, this was a bid, it was a rebid, and um, the, the bid was taken on April 30th. The contract had, had expired on, the, on April 1st, so it, it's kind of incumbent upon the board to take action tonight. So with your permission, I would like to request that this be added to the agenda. That will be uh, that will be N thirty three. Is that correct? N thirty three. Very good. Well, in light of uh, both the fact that we all have somewhere to be soon after our pre order meeting, and uh, the fact that we've got a little bit more time now, why don't we dispense with our pre order report so we can skip them during the regular meeting? 
I will thank you <coughs> very much. Um, uh, I'll start. For those of you who haven't been there yet, you absolutely have to check out the new Passaic County Arts Center at the John W. Ray House in Hawthorne. Uh, a number of us, uh, Fielder Duffy and uh, uh, I think Sandy, you were there with this as well for the for the ribbon cutting uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the John W. Ray House is a historic house, one of the oldest in the county, located in Golf Over Park in Hawthorne. Uh, and as part of our ongoing historic preservation and restoration agenda, uh, you know, under the supervision of Kelly Rafael, who's our Director of Historic and Cultural Affairs, and our friends in the Parks Department, uh, it has been beautifully refurbished. Uh, on the top floor, there's wonderful exposed uh, beams, uh, old enough that for those of you who know the difference, you can see that they're hewn, not sawn. Uh, from uh, back when the Ray House was built uh, in the late 18th century. Um, but other than that historic element and the exterior, the interior is transformed into a remarkable art gallery, uh, as well as office space and space uh, for the Hawthorne Historic Society and for Passaic County and artists in Passaic County to provide classes and programming and all kinds of uh, great stuff there. Uh, the Ray House opened with two exhibits, one of portraits, one of uh, art inspired by nature. Uh, you absolutely should check it out, and uh, it's something I think we can all be very proud of, not just con continuing our historic preservation agenda, but expanding into a real support of the arts. You say. Okay. Ruth? Like, we joke around, and like, if I could run the road with someone, I think it would be you. Um, I want to thank you guys for inviting us today, and I want to thank you for this recognition. So, to start off our little story, um, it all started with Ms. Vaughn and Ms. Nolan walking into our classroom, sophomore year, and saying, you guys need to get involved. It's sophomore year. You're not freshmen anymore. You know, you have to be more active. PCTI uh, offers so many opportunities, so many clubs, so many sports. And I kind of rose my hand like, hey, I have an idea. My family in Dominican Republic, we build houses, we volunteer, we give out TVs, and I wanted to do something on my own. I wanted to kind of like follow what my family was doing. And I thought, we can do something small. I was probably going to ask for donations 
during Thanksgiving, and luckily, according to your card now, Emily looks at me and goes, that sounds like really cool, we should we can do some things together. I really didn't think much of it. I thought that maybe Ms. Nolan and Ms. Sokka were gonna walk out and forget what I said, or maybe they were gonna be like, oh, okay, that seems cool, or that seems reasonable, and not really do anything, because I feel like so many people want to help, so many people, want to volunteer, so many people want to go out for positions, but they end up not moving forward and actually doing what they set their mind on. But luckily, that wasn't the case, and Ms. Nolan and Ms. Vodka reached out to us and were like, so what do you guys want to do? And we looked like, what do you mean what we want to do? They're like, don't tell us. I said, I'm planning a trip to Dominican Republic. Uh, PCTI in the medical <clears throat> shop offers different, to every single year there's a different shop. So for sophomore year, we had dental. We said, perfect, we're related to that. So luckily, we went to the dental convention, and we received donations from Sense and Dine and Colgate, over 200 toothbrushes from Colgate, and over 1,000 toothpastes from Sense and Dine. So what we came up with was e and &E. It's a little corny, but we put the double E in teeth. So that's how it started. <laughs> that is how it started. And we were able to raise $800, and with that money, it paid for... Uh, the expenses during the trip. I had the ability to travel and go to orphanages. I went to retirement homes. I went to places that didn't even have lights or streets. And I went down and I sat a huge group of kids and I invited them all. And I explained them, you know, dental, how to brush their teeth, how to care for them. Because I feel like every day we wake up and we don't really think about every single item that we use, especially a toothbrush. Not everybody has that education. So when I'm sitting there and I was speaking to these kids and they were telling me about their dreams and how they want to be a dentist and how they want to do something, I was so happy and I came back from that trip feeling so grateful for everything that I did. And something as simple as two girls, a sophomore year of high school, could help so many people. It didn't end there. And there was junior year. <laughs> and we like to call this the year of like everything was going wrong. It was like a hurricane, then there was an earthquake, something happened in Florida. And me and Emily were like, okay, it's junior year. What did you have in mind? Everything's going wrong. We need to help and do something. So luckily, with the help of Ms. Vodka and Ms. Nolan, we looked for different organizations. And the one that we chose was Direct Relief. The reason we really liked this one was because 99% of their profits actually go into helping people. That was very important. The people that were donating were hardworking, middle class, my family, students my age, we wanted to make sure that their money was going somewhere that was actually helping. So we were able to raise $2,000 to direct relief and they were divided into four places. It was Puerto Rico because of the hurricane, uh, Florida as well, Mexico because of the, uh, the earthquake, and Syria with the refugees. But I would like to say that the reason that we were capable of raising so much money was because of sophomore year. We took so many pictures Every single chance I got, I took pictures. I wanted, I even FaceTimed with no one in Ms. Watkins in Vinegar Pope. Barely any Wi-Fi, but I managed to get a little clip of what was happening. We didn't take pictures because we wanted to be like, oh look, we volunteered. We wanted to take pictures to show people like, this is where your money is going. We're actually doing something as students. You know, the State County Tech supported us and we did this together. And then finally, <laughs> senior year, I'm very sad, thinking about, I'm not gonna be here anymore and taking over. But senior year, we decided that we wanted to include our whole shop. You know, that we did this together. It wasn't just Emily and Eleni, Ms. Dolan and Ms. Vaca. All together, as a school, as a high school, we raised all this money. And I just, like, we decided to, we want them to choose what do they want to do this year, where do they want to donate. So we went into every single one of the classes and spoke about four different organizations. Eva's Village, um, Turning Point, there was an adoption center and also Covenant House in Newark, which helps with people with sex trafficking, human trafficking. And we held a little competition. What do you feel like speaks to you the most? And with that, we were able to raise $2,100 that we won up last year, so I'm very happy about that. And we donated to all those four places. So yeah, that's kind of a rundown of everything that happened. It's a lot, it's a mouthful, but we're so happy because it's gonna continue on in PCTI. It's still gonna be going. And an utterly shock, what surprised me was, in this shop of medical people, people that are studying to help others, there was nothing like this. But it just takes one person with one idea, and look how far we've become. So thank you so much. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> so at least I, 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 I can just, I'm just going to read it up. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm every day. <laughs> I don't need to read it. Uh, so whereas Emily Duval and Eleni Pereira <laughs> are also committed to continue in this program long after they have left PCTI and have selected students to take over for them so that the message and the work of e and &E can continue to provide support for those in need. Their message has spread throughout the Academy of Medical Arts student body, and they reunited, recruited underclassmen to volunteer in creating the sunshine bags. Mm -hmm. Are those dental ones? Um, yeah, no, 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 the sunshine bag, I forgot to mention, there was so much, I'm so sorry about that. It had to do with mental health, because I think we never really remember what people are that are going through sex trafficking and human trafficking. So like mental health is maybe the last thing on a person's mm -hmm. mind. So we wanted something to remind them that they're special, that here's a message written by the students, and we got them like stress balls, coloring, and I remember emailing the person, she's like, you mean coloring? I was like, yes, and I sent her like links of stress relief and everything like that. So that is what we did this year, because we wanted to go back on our roots from sophomore year of the little bats. And the number of students seeking outside volunteer opportunities has increased exponentially. Yeah. <laughs> and whereas E and E's legacy will always be the example they have set for the Academy of Medical Arts students at PCTI, and whereas E and E were acknowledged and featured on Channel Seven News, Be Kind campaign page as women who have done something extraordinarily kind. You to see that. <laughs> now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of Joseph Freeholders of the County of Say that it publicly recognizes Emily and Eleni for the contributions they have made to the community and county for sake, and be it further proclaimed that this board extends its sincere best wishes to Emily and Eleni for continued health, happiness, and success. Thank you so much.
other men and women who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces, as well as this week, former Mayor of Hawthorne and former State County Creator Anthony Ross, uh, and former Councilman and Wayne Allen Purcell. Santiago Escarfutery, and this is my first time coming to this meeting, so I'm sorry if I stumble over my words a little bit. Um, I'm a resident of Patterson. I live by John F. Kennedy High School, and I have a freshman in high school, and she is a special needs child. She has autism, and I'm here because this afternoon I had a meeting with the mayor to speak about revenue and recreation for special needs, I spoke to him on some suggestions that I had for raising revenue for property taxes. I have provided copies for everyone here, and I would like to know what are the plans for recreation, and I would like to know who do I have to go to or who do I have to speak to to make an appointment to speak with someone to speak about recreation for special needs children. Not only children on the spectrum, but children with mental and physical disabilities as well. Thank you. And I'm sorry, 
I am here representing the parents group strength to stand up. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of my associates, um, me and I. My associates are from Wayne, from Patterson, Little Falls, and Passaic. On the interest of um, you put in bringing services such as activity centers, residential facilities, vocational training, and transportation for our adults with developmental disabilities who reside in uh, Passaic County. The population has been uh, commuting out, outside of the county for day services or being placed in adult medical day uh, places or uh, centers that are inappropriate at best and they are fully paid by Medicaid. Uh, we have the opportunity of touring one of other, uh, like an autism specific uh, center this last week and Medicaid pays for this, so this is not like a big investment or a lot of money that has to be raised. You only have to put uh, goodwill into doing that and uh, political will to do that. Um, we also researched some other services which will be of little cost or no cost to the county and will greatly improve the quality of life for adults with developmental disabilities such as autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and others. Uh, one is a collaboration between uh, non-for-profits, such as the ARC, and the community college. Uh, that is done in other counties. Um, I wrote some copies of the, uh, the collaboration between the ARC of Somerset and the ARC of uh, Hunterdon County with the um, community college. So that will be a little cost, and big rewards for this population. And the other uh, collaboration is something that is widely adopted in New Jersey. It's called the Project Search. It is a transition uh, program for um, children with uh, developmental disabilities from high school into adulthood. Um, usually it's done by the Workforce Development Boards in every county, and we also brought uh, copies of this from Bergen County. There's also uh, contacts, emails, and phone numbers if somebody wants to take the, um, the initiative on this. As always, we are here available by uh, phone or email to meet with you at your convenience. Today I was, I happened to be the only one that was available, uh, but the whole board can uh, meet with you at any time. Thank you again for all your collaboration and your interest. We all this Duffy, yes. James, yes. Ford, yes. Deputy Director Lazare, yes. Director Barda. Yes. So I would just like to address uh, the topic of recreation here in Passaic County. We have been in touch with the state and actually do have a meeting scheduled for June 24th talk about bringing recreational activities into the county, the developmentally disabled. Um, so we are working on it, and I just want to let you know that as with anything else, sometimes it takes a little time, but, and Emma, I think I've mentioned to you before that we were working on different projects, and so the part that I'm more geared toward right now is recreation. I know Greenholders, uh, James and Duffy were in Bergen County this week, and maybe they want to speak to that. I think that we uh, need to get in the game here and uh, meet the needs here. There, there's you know, some there's enormous amount of resources, and I think part of the problem is they're not 
people are not connected to them in any meaningful way uh, unless somebody connects them. Um, there's a lot more all of us could be doing. Uh, Burton County was impressive. It was a high school uh, connected to the high school, which kids would want to be connected to that. Only 100 kids connected to that uh, was uh, one of the various nonprofits, but there's a nonprofit in there that uh, take people in a transition out of uh, you know, uh, foster home or foster care. Uh, that's enormous because something has to something has to give with that. So they take people and they have behavioral problems, some of them, but the nonprofit does an incredible job. The woman who was there was doing it for over 30 years, uh, and it was just impressive. So Terry and I and Sandy were going to have uh, a, a uh, seminar, if you will, a community meeting at our human at our student services department, and we have resources there. Uh, this begins the conversation. You know, we, there's, there's a lot that can be done. That's what we learned that Medicaid was paying for uh, some of the services uh, that they were offered in Burton County, uh, because that's always that's always one of the one of the issues. Like, where's the money going to come from? Um, so that was actually good to hear that it's Medicaid, that it's eligible, and that it, it's just a remarkable uh, uh, program running in Burton County. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. What we do have to do. Um, what was asked for? A simple room. Just a room. And that's how it started, correct? One room. Um, so this is the seed that starts it. And I really appreciate the fact that when we went to Bergen County, uh, it was just open arms, uh, full of information, willing to help us in any way at all uh, in getting started. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, Sandy's been looking at this from well, for months now. Uh, also, so um, you know, that's my background. Social services is my background. Uh, it's what I spent my life doing. So we're looking forward to this, and, and I really appreciate the help we got from Bergen. Uh, this is the top of the ladder, and we're going to keep climbing. Uh, and we have things that we're going to get done in this county. The recreation uh, part, um, Sandy's on top of it. Our administrators on top of it. Carol Sparta, our parks director, is on top of it. I think we are very pleased uh, with where that goes. But, uh, I'd just like to, to, to add that first time, it's probably 12 years we've uh, recently filled the recreation coordinator's position here in the city county. So we haven't had a rec coordinator in a long time. Uh, and he will be uh, at the meeting uh, for the, that, that you set up with the state so that we can begin to do that. And as part of whatever we're going to call it, Gulfbrook Park Phase 4, uh, we are building a, uh, a, a playground, a new playground near the uh, recently uh, done ball fields. Uh, that will be for handicapped individuals, developmentally disabled uh, people. So um, we're headed in the right direction, and I think uh, what's real, what Zara said, um, sometimes it doesn't happen as fast as any of us like, but I think uh, with your help and we keep coming to meetings and making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do, uh, we're going to get there. I think you know, what happens is it points out it points out some weak spots also, especially uh, with workforce development. Um, DVR needs to step it up. DVD is involved with uh, people in transition. DVR on the labor side uh, needs some improvement. So we're working on all of that. Uh, you know, that's an opportunity for somebody to become self-sufficient. Everything that can possibly be done for that individual should be done. So that's what we're all working on. I do appreciate the fact that you come and give us these updates and give us ideas. So we appreciate it. I, and I just want to say there is a glimmer of hope, too. On Friday, I was in Hawthorne, and I don't know if you know the Spring Board program in Burke County, the house where the 18 to 20 year old. Actually, the first one of the state county started in Hawthorne, just as probably last year. And I went there Friday because they have a little cafe to eat. And it's very similar, similar to Springboard. That's not a county uh, initiative. It's more of the school district. So my hope, and I spoke to the superintendent of schools, and I said, why can't every high school in Passaic County have a program like this? So it's been started. Hopefully it's going to take off. And I mean, if you want to reach out to your school districts, they're the ones who would have to take the lead on that. 
But there is one for the first time in Passaic County, and I'm hoping that's going to spread throughout the whole county to all the high schools. So it's a great program. So good news is we have members of boards of ed who are very interested in coming to our meeting and seeing the services. Uh, they're interested in expanding their programs. I think there's some frustration because where they have kids that need help, sometimes they can't get them the help that they want to get them, and I think that's a problem. So again, it's the conversation that we all need to have. And boards of ed members are going to be at that meeting. Uh, so far, I have three conflicting. I'm talking to Rosine, who is the president of Board of Ed Patterson. Patterson has 10,000 kids that are, that are classified. 10,000. They don't have autism. 10,000 individuals that are classified. That's an astonishing number. So that's just one city. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Is that an open meeting to the public or just members of the it's, it's not going to be open to the public, but if you would like to come, let me know. And only because we're limited in space, so this isn't, this is to get ideas and we're going to hear from people from SHIP, which has about a thousand kids in Burton County that they work with. Uh, there's a nonprofit that works out of the place that we went to uh, uh, the other day. She's coming, so we have some people coming that need to be heard, and I want to, this initially was going to be for Board of Ed people because they have a problem with the kids in school. But this is beyond that. It's when you transition out, we have kids in, in Foster homes where they transition out. Um, this is the start of the conversation, so it's not going to be 6,000 people, because my idea is the more people you have in the first week, the less you're going to get done. Right? So you're going to have the professionals there, the people who know what they're doing, who have done this for years, we're going to listen to them and get some ideas. And we're going to, this is the beginning of it. It's not going to be the end of it. That makes sense? Yeah. And I, I just want to close it out by saying, Emma, thank you for being here again. Uh, Erica, thank you for making the time and, and commitment to come out and talk to us as well. I suspect it's not the last time we'll see you here. As you can hear, you've got folks up here uh, who are working hard on these issues. Uh, nothing happens as quickly as you'd like. But I uh, recall you had a question about uh, information that could be made available to people that are part of strength to stand up and the other parents organizations out there. Uh, the county does host various programs, uh, particularly in April for Autism Awareness Month. Uh, those are videotaped and you can find them on our YouTube channel. Two years ago we did a program on, it was sort of a uh, soup to nuts view of the various services that are available from DBRS, from the Sheriff's Office, from the various county offices. This year we did one on uh, estate guardianship and financial planning for uh, families with adult children or near adult children on the spectrum. Uh, so those resources are also things we're trying to push out there. And I would encourage you to share uh, with folks uh, as well from the uh, YouTube channel on the internet. Uh, so again, thanks very much for coming. That brings us to the consent agenda. Can I have a motion to add N33? Move it. Second. Fiola Ms. Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazar? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. Can I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda N1 through N33? Thank you. Fiola Ms. Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Deputy Director Lazar? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. New business, guarantee ordinance 2019-06. Um, Do you need to read the title? Yes, and uh, Director, we are in receipt of the supplemental debt statement uh, uh, from our CFO. And, and the ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, of lease purchase obligation of the Passaic County Improvement Authority in aggregate principal amount not to exceed $12,126,000 and consenting to the such financing and determining certain other matters in connection therewith. Very good. Can I have a motion to approve Guarantee Ordinance 2019-06 on the retreat? Second. Three holders, Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Before? Yes. Deputy Director Lazara? Yes. Director Bartlett? Yes. Can I have a motion on personnel? Second. Three holders, Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Before? Yes. Deputy Director Lazar. <coughs> Director Bartlett. Yes. Bills. Second. 
Three holders, Duffy, yes. James Labour, yes. Deputy Director Lazare, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Uh, anything else from our Deputy County Administrator who just showed up? Am I right? Yes. All right. Very good. With that, can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Three holders, Duffy, yes. James Labour, yes. Deputy Director Lazare, yes. Director Bartlett. Yes. Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. And that's it. Yeah.